The parents of a teenager from Dorset who has only weeks to live have launched an awareness campaign to highlight the importance of the early detection of brain tumours in young people. The 16-year-old has been living with brain cancer for five years. It took six weeks to diagnose, but his parents feel it could have been spotted earlier. Matthew Hill reports. It's hard to believe this energetic 16-year-old is facing the end of his life. Well, if you get a bee buzzing around you, just, just don't panic. No. Otherwise, they're more likely to sting you. David's been living with brain cancer for five years. I've relapsed several times, which is fine. Um, <laughs> and now I'm kind of stuffed. But, yeah, hey, we can't wait more. Before I was diagnosed, I was feeling really weird, sicky, I would get really bad headaches. I thought it was just maybe I was coming down with something or ill or it was normal. Because um, it was it came on so slow that it kind of almost became kind of a normal thing. It took six weeks to diagnose, but his parents feel it could have been spotted earlier. It was only a four day delay for us, but he a medulloblastoma the children are usually, the f from the first symptoms, they are dead after six weeks. We were in our sixth week. We'd have lost him that week. So that four-day delay could have been fatal. 500 children are diagnosed with brain tumours each year in the UK. It can take up to three months to diagnose them. That's three times longer than in the United States. That's why Mrs langton Jilts has made it her mission to deliver these pocket-sized symptom cards to as many school children as she can. Because I didn't have the HeadSmart Symptoms card to check, I, of course, didn't link the headache week one, one with one vomit week two with another headache in week three, a vomit in week four, and I didn't know to ask about his eyes. I had thought he's being a bit placid, but I didn't know that that is classic behavioural change. And he became really quite placid and terribly well behaved, <laughs> which was out of character. Okay. But, and, and you could see with his eyes, there was a lot of, the eyes were moving around yes. quite a lot. But it was nothing... Of, nothing dramatic. Trained, that's nothing the trouble. Dramatic. I think that's why it's so important. You know, if, if you've got the same risk of your child getting meningitis as getting a brain tumour, so roughly one in 600 children, you know, parents know how to pick up the signs of meningitis. We need them to know how to pick up the signs of a brain tumour. Dandelions and dragonflies, they spend, like, they've got a fairly long, they live for about four or five During his short life, David has built up a deep knowledge of nature. His only hope now is that other youngsters will be spared the surgery he's had to undergo. If only they can be diagnosed in time. And then that's Matthew Hill, BBC Spotlight, the end of their life cycle. Most of them get Joining me now is the Chief Executive of the Samantha Dixon Brain Tumour Trust, Sarah Linzel. Um, a trust set up by parents in a very similar situation to David's. They lost their little girl, didn't they? What an incredible boy David is, isn't he? Um, but, but knowledge is key to this, isn't it? What are the symptoms that parents and carers should look out for? And when do you take those seriously? How do you know? I think it's very difficult. Quite often the signs and symptoms of brain tumours do mimic other childhood illnesses. But I think as a parent, you know when something's wrong, um, and it's about persistence. So as, as Sasha tells us, um, persistent headaches, persistent vomiting, um, persistent uh, changes in eye movement, sometimes a, a head tilt. And actually, the signs and symptoms do change as with age groups in children. Uh, our website can reassure parents to as to what they should be looking for. That card you're holding there mm. is for parents and carers, isn't it? That's on headsmart.org.uk, and That's you can right. find all the information on there. That's as a right. charity, along with other experts, you've brought diagnosis times down from just over nine weeks to seven and a half weeks. Yeah. As you say, as a charity, it needs to be brought down under five yes. weeks to really make a difference yes. to people. How do you do that? Well, it's actually down to people like Sasha uh, and like many of your viewers to, and tonight who are up and down the country taking head smart cards into every GP surgery, every primary school, every nursery, every family centre, every Sure Start centre, so that every family has a symptoms card in their medicine cabinet next to the cowpaw. That's how we'll save lives. And for those who have a diagnosis, you also offer a lot of support, don't yes. you? Yes. 
As a charity, the Samantha Dixon Brain Tumor Trust has been going for about 15 years now, and we offer support and information for families. Indeed, we have an information day in Plymouth um, on the 15th of June, so please do contact us if you'd like more information about that. As a charity, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, you can get through to your charity if anyone's concerned do, uh, through the BBC Dorset website as well. We've got all your information on there. Um, well, thank you very much indeed for coming in, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.